Masoud Ahmed, Director of the IMF's Department for the Middle East and Central Asia. Thank you for joining us today to speak about the economic outlook of the region. My pleasure. The Middle East and North Africa is witnessing intensified conflicts. How are these conflicts affecting the countries in the region? Today, there are 11 million people that have been displaced. Many of them are now living as refugees in neighboring countries. The economic cost has been felt so far mainly in the countries where the conflict is taking place. But there is also an impact in neighboring countries. The numbers so far don't show a big impact on growth, but it's clear that uh, this conflict has an effect on their neighbors through refugees whom they have to care for and provide financing for. That's particularly true for Jordan and for Lebanon. It has an impact on trade, it has an impact on tourism, and it also creates a, a, a greater sense of uh, risk for the region as a whole, which affects foreign investors. Oil prices um, have uh, uh, fallen sharply recently. Did this have an impact on the economies of the countries in the region? So for the oil exporters of the region, and I'm thinking here of the countries of the GCC and the other oil exporters, well, the GCC countries uh, have the financial resources to be able to deal with a, a short-term fall in oil prices without changing their spending plans. But even before the fall in oil prices, we were saying uh, to a number of countries in the region that they needed to moderate their spending because they were not saving enough for future generations. And now, with oil prices lower, particularly if this low oil price, say $85 a barrel, is going to last for any length of time, then the urgency of taking action uh, on uh, those spending plans is even greater. How are the oil importing countries coping with tough economic times? The last four years have not been easy years for the oil importers of the Middle East. For many of them, a combination of shocks from the international economy, slow growth in Europe, which is a big trading partner, uh, increase in the price of commodities, uh, which we are now seeing partly reversed, and also a slowdown in their own domestic economy coming from political transition, from social unrest, has meant that growth rates have fallen quite sharply. Unemployment, which used to be already high, particularly amongst young people, amongst women, has risen even further. Nevertheless, despite these difficulties, I think it's important to recognize that these countries have managed to maintain macroeconomic stability, and some of them have also started to take the steps that will improve the prospects for higher growth. You know, our region used to have general subsidies on energy products for half of the world's subsidies on energy were in our own region. Many countries in the region, Morocco, Tunisia, Jordan, Egypt, Yemen, have all taken action in the last two years to replace these general subsidies with more targeted subsidies for poor people and then freed up some money which they are now spending on investment, on education, on health. In your view, what are the priorities for boosting jobs and growth in the region? ordinary people are still not seeing an improvement in their daily lives. Their prospects for getting a job are still looking dim for many of the young people coming into the marketplace. Now, how can they do that? First of all, they have to continue to make space in their budget for investment and for job creating uh, spending. Second, they have to improve the business climate. And what do I mean by that? It's the cost of doing business for private sector enterprises, large and small. Most of the jobs will come from the private sector, from small companies, and to do that, they need a better working environment than they've had in the past. Third, they, they need to provide uh, financing for the private sector. And finally, they need to take measures that will improve the integration of these economies with the world economy, because growth will come through more integration with the world economy. None of these things are going to produce results very quickly, and that's why in the short run, in some countries, a program of public infrastructure projects, if they can find financing for it, uh, would be a very useful uh, bridge towards the jobs that will come from the private sector in the medium term. Masoud Ahmed, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you.